Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, uh, basically, this is a architecture diagram. I would say a, a diagram for a SageMaker model, which deploys the model and uses the data on S3, and the com it automatically makes the compute uh, resources up. And then uh, the main point here is that we are using the AWS API gateway, which exposes the endpoint from the SageMaker model uh, into a REST API. And this REST API is then in terms integrated with the ServiceNow application. So, so the demo use case that we are, uh, that we did a POC or, or what we are going to demo on is the incident task categorization. So uh, basically, if, if, if there is an IT incident or an IT uh, ticket which is being reported, so le uh, and let's say they gave a short description like network not working or hardware installation or software installation. So basically, they would, uh, they would need, uh, basically, we would create a new task ticket for this particular, um, uh, for this particular uh, incident which was reported. And we would have its fields pre-populated using AI or ML models, um, which are present on the SageMaker. So this would be our uh, demo use case. And these models are running on the SageMaker and they expose using REST API. So I'll briefly just uh, go through what the steps that this demo would follow is. We would create a deploy a ski learn model in SageMaker. We would expose it using REST API, using the AWS API gateway. And then this REST message on REST API would be exposed in say, uh, into the ServiceNow REST messages. And then we would create a ServiceNow workflow. This workflow basically uh, gets triggered when a new incident is found. It would uh, call a REST API that we've created in the above steps uh, using the script execution. And then once the, we get the result from the model, um, which runs on the SageMaker, once we get the result from the model, it gets um, it gets it gets uh, executed in the workflow, and the new step on uh, a new task gets created, which uh, which would populate the fields in the task uh, based on the model results. So uh, I, I'll just briefly go through how, uh, what was the this was the model. So we created a ServiceNow POC notebook instance in uh, AWS SageMaker. And we uh, wrote our model here in the train.py file. So this was the model where it took the data from the S3 bucket. And then this, this creates the model file. And then uh, fit the data, taking the data from the bucket. And basically, this is the command which deploys the uh, SageMaker model as an endpoint. So once we have this, so this is how it shows up in the uh, SageMaker. Uh, in the SageMaker endpoint, it shows up as a model here. The next step was to, in, since this is not exposed publicly, so we need to create an API gateway. And the main integration point here is, uh, so this is the AWS API gateway. We create a get method here. So here is the AWS service. And the main integration point is the path of the, um, um, the uh, endpoint that was the name of the endpoint. This needs to be specified here. So this, and then the service roles. And these are some query string parameters um, that we need to configure so that we have inputs coming from service now through the REST API. So w once this is done, we, we get an uh, URL, uh, which could be used. So this is the URL that which, 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 which could be used and uh, just copied it here as well. So this is the URL which gets copied. And I, uh, for an example, I've given short description, uh, short description is network issue here. So once I run this, this would run the model behind in SageMaker and give me a result for category as network. So basically if this, this is the short description, so the category for this particular ticket has to be network. Now we'll uh, integrate uh, this REST API uh, in uh, ServiceNow. So uh, I'll hand, uh, share the screen with uh, Vibhor. He'll, he'll take it forward on the REST API integration with ServiceNow. Yeah, I'll stop sharing and Vibhor, you can start.
Thanks, Priyanka. So basically, Priyanka given me one API. The API is this. So when I enter this one, so it will show you the network. So I have injected this API in REST REST message in service now. In service now, I have created the REST message. The example demo AWS in demo AWS. I have added this endpoint URL with uh, what Prinka given to me. So this is a short description. When we enter anything, it will be displayed. So our scenario is basically uh, if uh, if we, we are creating the workflow in this workflow. In this workflow, what is our scenario? So basically, we will run the web service. Web service given the result. If that result will be create the task, and task what what the web service given the message it automatically injected in the task. So in this run script. We have used the demo uh, demo AWS, which one we have created as a REST messages, and we pass the parameter short uh, description, and it it would give us one uh, response body. We we are capture in this workflow sketch pair in category. So the output of this one we have entered here. So basically, if you see here. so current incident we have created so what the short description in current incident it will be saved in task and what what is the output of our rest api it would be saved in in our task description so i am creating one incident and incident automatically create the task and automatically this and this value will be populated so here i am creating so this is the incident id it automatically generated so it is assigned to system administrator and i have written here network issue and submitted this one now incident automatically create the task we can check that the task so we have created the incident 25 it automatically created the task this one and this task in incident we have given the network issue in short description and the category it automatically generated the network network is a category so that uh, description is coming from our model it checking okay short description is this one it automatically generated uh, the result value the category of this and we are capturing this all the log information here so this is a workflow we, in this workflow it is showing we have created this uh, incident and it it would be show all the things here as well what we I, we have defined in uh, in incident creation so basically this is the our demo workflow uh, what uh, we have created the uh, model in aws stage maker and how it is working in service now so that is for my end pinkan you can uh, 
Yes, so basically we could also uh, show briefly the predictive analytics that uh, ServiceNow offers. We could show up the screens and uh, if, if you could yeah. just... I, yeah, I, I Priyanka, Priyanka, let's, uh, can we, um, I, I think I have a couple of questions in, in this integration. So uh, what is the model really doing on AWS? Um, is it is it trying to predict something or uh, what exactly is that? Maybe I missed that part. Did you explain that in the beginning? Yeah, so basically the model is given a short description as input and mm -hmm. it, it returns me the category uh, based on the description. Oh, okay. 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 So it's, it's, it's like a analysis so short, uh, yeah. of the incident or uh, if somebody is, uh, is it like somebody's passing some sort of a description on the incident and that's how you get the type of the incident? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So basically we are categorizing, um, or let's say in this case, this is coming up. So network issue is an input and network is what we get from the, um, model and mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is this task gets created as a part of the workflow that we just showed okay so i can also say like you know hey uh you know my my wi-fi is not working or something and then it should come back as a network issue something like that right yes yes uh, maybe if you could uh, show one more example to him From the URL itself, we can show up what's the result. Yeah. So basically, this is the URL, and the parameter gets passed from the service now field incident. Mm -hmm. So we say incident dot current description gets passed to this URL. Um. So right now we have uh, so basically uh, authentication it does provide um, we need to configure it at the api gateway level and okay. currently uh, yeah so we currently was, we have yeah 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 Christian. um yeah i guess that it's it's not authenticating but i was wondering if um, it is something easy to add, for example, that it authenticates with the AWS user, or if you need to add something else to the right. to the SageMaker service right. as well. Or, or if uh, ServiceNow has any plugin or anything. Yeah, ServiceNow yeah, provides these three. Type, three types of uh, authentications. Yeah. OAuth2 is what it supports. But what do you need to do on, on the AWS side for this to work? Uh, I think it's the REST API that uh, we can configure to use OAuth to. So we need we need to uh, program this on the REST API to work with um, yep with the authentication. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to turn it on on both the sides. I think. Um, so the, yeah, this service now instance is a is this a testing account? Yes, this is a testing yeah. dev account that they provide for ten days. Okay, uh, so you, in one of the steps, you said you train the data on the S3. How you get the data to the S3, training data? So basically, I, I, I just copied the table data. I would say uh, one of the instance, I just copied it and put it on S3 bucket. That was manual right now. So you're you, not consuming it um, directly from an API or anything similar? Um, we, we can do that as well. But okay. currently, it's a manual step. I, I copied the data from the ServiceNow dev instance that we have. And, and how did you do that using an API call from ServiceNow? I mean, maybe you can show that if you have that. Basically, answer. it was a simple export uh, export of a table in a CSV file, and then I uploaded it on the S3 bucket. So right now is the manual work. We can automate this. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, we, we can call it through a URL. As well. Yeah, so there is an API for that. Yes. You call API from AWS side or you've called it from ServiceNow side? So you, it, it, I think if it is a REST endpoint uh, looming, we can call it from the notebook, from the SageMaker notebook. Yes, it has, it has to be called from the notebook. From the notebook to the, to the ServiceNow API? Yep. Yes, yes. 
if okay. we are doing i mean that would still be i would say more like a you know manual if if you are programming if you are writing if you are building a model or something in in the notebook um but i think at the deployment stage we should still you know we should we should be able to automate this as well so if we are packaging this as um as a service within aws uh, i think we should be able to package it as well because it's just an endpoint it's it, so are we able to publish onto the to the service now uh platform yes we can publish so i can just show to you so here uh, i just checked it out if checked it out is everything okay then we can oh. publish the question was not about the workflow that was the model publishing yeah so, the model yeah so the, so um, basically we what we figured out currently uh, there is uh, a plugin called z z model framework uh, which does support i would say uploading uh, um, custom models there uh, but then yeah. that's not available in the trial version so we've not yeah. been able to see that okay all right so i need to leave now so very good job uh we need to schedule a meeting to demo this to sales to joe and jim okay uh i'll send out the meeting invite uh is this a good time for you guys to demo morning uh, your your night yeah the, the yeah, yeah, is, yeah, the, yeah i mean do you guys have more time for the trial license or uh um how yeah, today you... today i have so today is the ninth day for my trial account so today is the last day for me yeah i mean i i have the account if you need my account so we, we will we will have to set it up again we'll do it yeah 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 okay okay sounds yeah. good no I mean uh, we have uh, the the trial license we we will expire 10 days right so okay the team are already due to some time if you can schedule this meeting early the better Okay. Okay. Oh, I'll I'll set schedule it tomorrow morning. Uh tomorrow, let me double check. Either tomorrow or, or next day. So, yeah, in in see. Yeah, Priyanka, do you want to uh cover the classification model that yeah. uh Vipur was trying out? Yeah, Vipur, if you could just quickly share the screen, yeah. I will just cover it in few minutes. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks to you. basically this is a uh, predictive uh, intelligence plugin and predictive intelligence plugin we can create uh, our classification model so uh, um, i just show uh, we both let let me let me um, just quickly uh, explain this maybe uh, sorry to interrupt so predictive intelligence is something which um, service now provides um, and i would say we could customize it only at the field levels like what could be our target fields or what could be our input fields on training let's say we are taking a classification example and these are the three model types that it is currently supporting classification similarity and clustering so basically uh, we need to create our uh, i would say customized uh, customized model in in uh, in a solution definition so we can we all uh, we can always have a new solution definition that we can um, create So if you could click on solution definition, um, yeah, and you can click on new here. So we we could create these um, models here. Now let's say this is a classification model, uh, which runs on. So this the important thing is that it runs on a table. So let's say there is an incident table uh, that we run on, and then we say that this is the uh, short description where I need to predict. uh this is the prediction this is the input data which would help me predict and these are the output fields i want to predict on so this is the priority so given a short description i should be able to predict the priority uh on the uh, data for the table incident and then these are some filter conditions which uh, could be set um uh, for this particular model let's say i don't want to have the whole data in incident but i could set up like let, let's say the incident which are active or let's say the incident which were like last one month or one week and things like that so we could use all this data for filtering the training data and show it and uh, so basically it's it's this form uh, which it provides for configuring your table output field or field and filter conditions so that's that's what it provides um, 
for creating a model which it, which it calls this as a model solution and then we can update and train this um so currently what we are um, i would say again blocked on this is because um the predictive analytics needs to run on a non production instance so basically they are service now works on instances currently we are working on a dev instance but then there can be multiple instances uh, that a particular organization can have so what it does is in case of predictive analytics it does not uh, run the training of the model on the same instance but it uh, i would say it uses another instance and trains the model and gives the result back so currently since we are on a train uh, um, training kind of or a trial kind of instance we, right. we we were not able to test this out but then this is more or uh, less the predictive analytics form that they provide uh, other thing that we can add is that the results for this or uh, this model are also available through a rest api so they can again be configured as rest api um the screen that we showed earlier the rest message yeah. so uh before we can quickly sh also show the rest message and the drop down there and i think the reason priyanka you are right right so the for for training it it potentially needs a larger instance right yes. so all <clears throat> all it does is when we start the uh trial it just spins up a new instance you know in in orlando data center whatever right and i think when we try to run it with you know for the training data it just just you know it may require like a um, yeah. a bigger vm or or whatever and more uh, yeah. resources which which doesn't make sense for them to provide on the yeah. trial yeah. um dev so basically basically if the trained um, training classification is working fine so you can check your data in advance in advance it it will show all the graphs right now it is not populating because uh, this is failure so in this if you create this one so it will show all the predictions level all the graphical mode so you can check that here and this prediction you can add you, uh, to make your dashboard in performance analytics you can create the dashboard here and you can add this solution here so the predicted results you uh, all the predicted result will be uh, will be shown here so this kind of full integration given by service now so you can create the widgets here what type of you created the predictive analysis uh, definition similarities and clustering you can create here all the widgets so you can check that so that facility is given by service yeah actually one thing i noticed was that you also have an ability to sort of configure your resources um, you know your cloud resources within service yes. now so right i think that could potentially also uh, maybe for later but not for now i think what service now would allow you to do is also use your own gcp or aws resources right. and then potentially attach you know uh, maybe through yeah. some configuration attach it for your model yeah. uh, so, so that right. then the resources yeah. can be consumed or created from your from your cloud account directly so they, rather than relying on service now yes yeah, so basically service now is also uh, is also a cloud management tool so basically your application so you could manage your cloud resources on gcp in the context on your application though not not like a service offering like i mean if because this is yeah, so it's a hybrid cloud application if you want to set up on service now you can do that so but, but even with the cloud management i think that management is only for your own solutions that you are building on service now right yes 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 that's what so basically if you have an application on service now you could have uh, the resources for those applications or let's say just giving the example multiple clouds so that's why you could manage them at one place so you have your database on let's say aws or your uh, kubernetes on gcp and your application on service now so that's quite possible and that uh, you could configure uh, or manage using service now that's that's what hybrid cloud uh, application yeah uh, yeah um, you, you, okay
Yeah, maybe you could also show up the uh, rest message, uh, just the diagram. So basically, uh, what we were talking about that the ta table data is uh, accessible using a REST API. So everything uh, with this REST message, if if there is a drop down which comes up, uh, if you click on click on new. Then there needs to be a drop down that comes up, uh, which which uh, if if we created an API for a table, uh, right? So that was uh, REST. So that is that is the uh, different is the scripted REST API. So that yeah. is and we can we can expose. So I think scripted REST API. Uh, it was just REST API, I suppose. Yeah. So that is a scripted REST API. We have created get in this in get incident details. So, so we can create the our REST API here. So like this one. And and here is uh, so what is your scenario, Priyanka? Because I am doing. I just want scenario. to say yeah. So basically, we want to get the incident data uh, for a SageMaker model in a REST API endpoint uh, instead of um, exporting the CSV and then uploading it to S3. So instead of the S3, it takes it from the API. So I was talking about. Um, exposing the data of the table from service now using a rest api so uh, if, so if you could we need to yeah we need to check you, you just click on rest here it should it should be available the rest uh, there was there was one uh, drop in, not, not on the favorites i think System web services. This is the one. Okay. It should be REST API. Yeah, the out, outbound REST API could be. Yeah, yeah. Click on this. The same same link. There was something new. Same. We need to I, check I that. To check. Yeah. REST API. Click on this REST API Explorer. Yeah. Okay, this one, yeah, this yeah. one, okay. Yeah, so, so, no, this is the namespace. If you just leave this, uh, API, this is get incident details. But then there is a drop down which uh, gives you different options or different resources for uh, service now to create REST API on, which is like uh, very much available. Yeah. And the goal is to, uh, publish a SageMaker model and have ServiceNow consume that as a web service? Yes. Because like this we pay once for SageMaker and then once for ServiceNow or I've, I'm wondering about the, the way how this is going to be built or how, or how it's going to be structured. So basically, I think the application has to be on service now, and then it consumes the model. Uh, it it would execute and consume the model results in the application on service now. Yeah, um, I mean that's right. It, it consumes a web service. Yeah. And the web service executes the model, and yes. that means that I I'm I'm, I'm still so I don't I don't know exactly for. What's what the use case is for? No, uh, Christian, um, for this is this is a POC for uh, uh, integration on AWS and um, service. Now we don't have a concrete use case yet. Okay, and not the client that asks for this. No, no, no. no. So oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so service now, Christian is very much like a IT services management kind of a tool where. Think of this as as a tool for logging issues or reporting issues, right? So, 
um, ServiceNow is being used by by many corporations for you know their you know their CRM or or some you know customer engagement um, uh, models and and uh, what they are trying to offer you as you know is that you're essentially having the whole uh, life cycle of your customer engagement or or service models essentially managed uh, anything related to any type of service right. Um, that being managed by ServiceNow platform itself. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and, and, I, and what we are trying to do is, you know, one of the use cases, for example, if you're getting 10,000 calls in a day, you know, what's these, uh, it's very similar to what we discussed initially with AWS SageMaker, right? So uh, that can be potentially done here with ServiceNow where you can say, you know, what is the, uh, you know, what's the trend or what's the sentiment or, you know, uh, is is uh, you are getting calls at a specific time period, and then you can use machine learning uh, for that. And then the models can either be in service now or outside service now. You know, AWS GCP or or so on. Within service now is something that we still need to explore. Um, you know, where we have some restrictions here. Yeah. So the thing that I was wondering about is um, how this is going to be sold to a client, for example. If we manage the ServiceNow application and build on top of ServiceNow, then it would not make sense to call our own SageMaker model because, well, at least not in a typical setup because uh, we would be the ones that manage the model. We would be the ones that pay an extra for SageMaker. And then we would be the ones that pay as well as ServiceNow and pay, and pay at the same time ServiceNow and SageMaker. Uh, on the other hand, if the client manages service now, and we just provide, tell them, oh, you know what, um, you can use our SageMaker model there, and then they would use, they would, they would pay for the SageMaker model, and they would pay as well their um, resources on service now. Yeah, I, I doubt second would have would be like more of a use case. I think first would be would be a better choice where you're essentially building your offering and then you're offering that to the user. So in, in that case, the, the user does not have control on the model. We have control over the model and then we are offering a service through a service now platform. And of course, in that case, you know, it is our resources, you know, and we would charge the clients based on, you know, I don't know, maybe number of requests that are coming in or, or something like that. So, it's it's slightly different from GCP marketplace or AWS marketplace, right? Where once you expose your models, your services apps, or Kubernetes apps, for example, the client or the user can essentially download it in their own environment. Whereas with service now, it's it's more like what kind of application you're offering, what kind of services are you offering uh, through the service now platform. Yeah. So the second so use case I I mean, I don't know if those kind of use cases are, are being supported by service now. I, I don't know. I mean, if Priyanka, I mean, have you come across scenarios where you are exposing your service and then the user can essentially download that that whole um, you know service and then potentially deploy it in in their own environment, or is it more like a consumption model? I mean what is the kind of model or what, what is the kind of use cases that you've seen in the marketplace? I, I have seen the first one that you've mentioned that they create their own application on service now, have their own instances. Yeah, that is for the vendor side. I'm talking about the consumer side. Vendors are, of course, they are creating their resources. I am a vendor. I want to expose something on the marketplace for the other users. You know, the users can be like somebody like, I want to use this service now offering um i i have a certain use case and and they would not be technical users they would be like i mean the way i see this is this is more like a um it, it can be b2b b2c both but um on on the consumer side i have a certain use case and i want to use service now for that does service now support that use case and um so from the vendors of course i would create you know provision resources, create my application but on the consumer side, would I ever also like consume the whole app that is being offered by the vendor and then sort of offer it again, you know, maybe 
I think that kind of model is possibly not supported or it, it's not there on service now. Yeah, we would have to see that. So, uh, so what is the next? What's the plan? What was the question? Oh, I mean, what's the next thing we're going to do on service now? No, I think this this is uh, we just uh, want to throw the technical stuff that we can publish model on service now. Mm -hmm. Next step, we we identify the model we, we will publish on and create our account and publish the app. Oh, okay. So uh, for the account, any why is the only trial to do? Does it take time to get a real account? Or? Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, here's, here's the, the, the action plan uh, I suggest. Mm -hmm. Let's say tomorrow, right? So we do the demo to sales, to Joe, to Jim. Mm -hmm. And uh, once there's a green light, then we can uh, connect with IT. Uh, IT will need to create a business account for the, for the stress now. And then we can uh, use that account to publish the, the model that we identify. So you for didn't go in that then we don't get account. Uh, yeah, we need a business approval. Then uh, have IT set up the business account, which also go through the same procedure that uh, we had with the legal with the uh, with the finance, mm -hmm. right? Oh, okay. And uh, they need to set up a bank account associated with this account so that we can receive payment. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I, I would also want to add here, so uh, yeah, we would need to identify the model, but then I think we would also need to identify a use case in service now, let's say an application or sample application that we build, which consumes our model and it's a whole um, cycle. So just exposing the model would not uh, help. We would need um, its use case in service now, which I, I, I personally think that uh, maybe product uh, could help us on and just mm -hmm. just thought here what is the best model to use then and what is the what is the candidate the palm AI is not a good one a service now seems to be an hr itsm all those kinds of application that's that's been set up here so something similar so uh, basically, kind of yeah. so, uh, offerings yeah. that we have in our models in electrify and then we find out, okay, we could create, let's say this solution and uh, using this model is, maybe, is something maybe useful. Maybe contract AI to analyze contracts? We, we can, I, I think they already have something around contract. Uh, we, we can see that as well. Um, what about a company name and standardization? Can, that, is that one a good candidate? So basically, uh, we need to discuss on uh, company naming standardization would be, I, I, I need to understand, like, are we talking about a solution which would uh, give me company names and then I standardize it back? Uh, would that yeah. be helpful? That yeah. could be, uh, what, what was the question? What was the question? I'm sorry if you can repeat that. Yes, yeah, sort of. The question is that what models from Electrify, let's say, we could... Uh, uh, start integrating with service now and then I, I am suggesting that we would also need to understand like what exact solution on service now we want to integrate a model with Let, let's say, say we need to come up with a use case uh, and maybe product can help us on what use case yeah. we should use to have an end-to-end -end or representable um, solution on service now which says okay this is this is what we propose as a solution and this yeah. uses these models yeah i i think well, so we need so, some direction here yes so so chris i think the 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 short answer for that is that sales and product team has to come back and say what we can utilize out of all the models that we have on the service now right so uh, mm -hmm. support on service now is one thing but at the same time you know uh, building the offering or solution for service now or whoever wants to con consume service now as a platform is another is another thing right 
so yeah. um, i mean we we cannot mock up some some use case on our side i mean it has to be done after a thoughtful consideration by by product team or sales team and see if there is a potential with the revenue or if it is a pr marketing exercise and we we just have to clearly define that because we i mean if we can say we can run palmo ai on service now but does it even make sense um mm-hmm. similarly you know as you said vendor um cleansing models or integration um i i i i doubt if you know i mean if there is a direct use case but that being said if we can pitch in in a in a different you know if we can have a different spin on it that you know you can use vendor cleansing or standardization in a particular use case then it could then it becomes a candidate you know um i don't know i mean maybe in some sort of a contract processing or or some data um some sort of a you know if if your incidents are around some sort of suppliers um that you are generating through through service now then you can use our vendor standardization model to cleanse that data that you are uh, getting from um, from service now so i i think we'll have to think about it because uh, service now have all the use cases they, they, the fit there is is more around services and it services and those kind of use cases a lot of these companies utilize service now in that way anything related to hardware or customer touch point or you know bpo processing or you know so so we need to think through this this whole thing oh, okay okay yeah i think i got it mm-hmm. so anything else uh... no chris we are done okay oh. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. This is re- really nice time. Yeah. Thank. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. yeah thanks. Mm.